Right, beginner photographers. I'm here to help <laughs> if I'm even in if I'm even in frame because I'm also a beginner. Well, I'm like an intermediate, I would say now because I've done a couple of paid jobs. So I feel like I've got some leg to stand on when it comes to knowing what gear to buy and saving you the hassle of buying the wrong stuff when you're starting out in photography. So let me just grab my camera bag, which is funnily enough, the first one <laughs> is a camera bag. Make sure you buy the right camera bag. Don't cheap out and go for a tiny, tiny little bag that costs you 50 quid that can fit your camera and one lens. Yes, you might only have a camera and one lens, but if you're gonna take this photography thing seriously, we all know you're gonna buy new gear, right? So you don't wanna have to go out again and buy another bag in the future. Most of the cheap ones are not even waterproof. This PGY Tech bag, which I recommend, is 140 pound, I think. I got it at Christmas, so it might be a bit cheaper but it is 100% worth it. You've got all the little compartments you need for intermediate to beginner photographers. So you can start off with a small collection of gear, but then you can also upgrade to having two lenses, a full camera, a drone, a gimbal, a laptop, everything can fit in here as you get further in your career as a photographer. So I 100% recommend this waterproof bag as well. I'll throw this thing around. It's been in the rain, it's been in the weather. I throw this, all my gears in there now. Don't care, I'll throw it on the floor because it's protected. You watch, my lens will be broken now. <laughs> but um, it's a great bag, so I 100% recommend this or just whatever litre size this is. Get a bigger litre size, don't cheap out and get a small one because you will have to buy one again in the future. So that's the first one. Get a decent camera bag. So you've picked up your camera bag. What is next is to put a camera inside the camera bag. And I can't recommend anything other than the Sony a6400. This is the best lens, I think, for beginners. I could be using it right now. It's what I started on. I only upgraded to a full frame camera just because I wanted to, really. Like everyone was banging on about it. So I just finally did. I had the money to do it. But if I didn't have the money to do it, I could still be using that Sony a6400 for all these jobs that I'm doing. It would keep up no problem. It shoots 4k it's got really high megapixels it's just a great overall camera the battery life is a bit meh but you just buy more batteries they're cheap it is what it is it's a budget camera it's like 600 600 quid i think when i got it around christmas so i would 100 look at that or any of the sony a6000 in that range it goes from 6000 up to 6500 i think those are the, those are the ones but the sony a6400 is the most popular and i think the cheapest out of all of them if you don't like sony the canon 80d is an option but i haven't really used it so i can't talk much about it but yeah get a sony a6400 for your camera i would recommend so that's the camera that is the bag now as we open my bag <laughs> we go to lenses which is actually the hardest decision i think and that's mainly because you don't know whether to get a prime lens or a zoom lens and let's be honest we all want a sigma 85 mil f 1.4 which i'm using right now or this g master uh, 100 mil or 35 mil we all want these certain lenses but what do you actually need if you're a beginner photographer and you want to start working with your camera you need a 24 to 70 let's be honest because that's going to cover you for all aspects of filming and photos from wide to zoom and it's just going to cover you for events for anything you don't have to worry you've just got one lens that can do all the jobs you need to so don't Think about what I want, think about what you need if this is gonna be your job. Again, there's three options and this just comes down to how much money you've got to spend. So you can either go to a Tamron, which is like the cheapest ones, lose a little bit of quality. Then you can go to the Sigma, which I recommend. Then you can go up to the actual manufacturer of your camera, which is probably the Sony G Master if you've got a Sony. So yeah, it just depends on how much money you've got to spend. i get a 24 to 70 from either of those companies. I recommend Sigma, it's dead in the middle. You don't cheap out too much, but you still get a good quality lens. And then you are covered then for all aspects of photography. And then once you You've got some money and you've got some more space to get a new lens then you can buy the lens that you want not the lens that you need all right so just think of it like that when you're starting out it will save you a lot of money i did the wrong thing i just got this 85 mil and then i was like well i can't shoot wide stuff now and i was limited to what i could shoot so don't make that mistake so that was number what was that number three i think it was number three so number four is filters you need certain filters depending on what sort of photography you're going to be taking so if you're a car photographer you need something like a polarizer and a polarizer basically cuts out reflections on cars it can move around the paint it can cut through glass or even if you're out on a sunny day it can actually retain a lot of the colors and stuff on a sunny day and makes it a lot brighter so a polarizer is definitely a filter that you should get i wouldn't go crazy because yeah they can get expensive but just don't cheap out too much because let's be honest you're spending a lot of money on a lens then you don't want to put a cheap piece of glass in front of that lens because that's 
defeats the whole point. So go somewhere in the middle. I recommend the K&F filters. They're all the ones I use. I've got four of them here. They're around about 50 to 100 pound per filter, but they're, they're so worth it. They are like bang in the middle. Another filter that you need is an ND filter. This is probably more uh, important than, this, than the polarizer because this is gonna help you with videos and photos when it's really, really sunny and you wanna keep your settings in a certain way but you can't because it's too overexposed. This is where this comes in. This is like sunglasses for your camera and it will darken the photo for you. I recommend getting a variable ND filter where you can actually change the, the, uh, the strength of that tint over the, over the lens. Because if you just get a solid one, you've got to constantly change them all the time. And we want conveniency here. But again, the cheaper you go, the more vignette and you're gonna get around the edges of your picture and videos when you're shooting. So just take that into consideration. Get some filters, K and F. It'll all be linked in the description. All this gear from this video is gonna be linked in the description. But yeah, definitely get some of them because you're going to need them in certain situations when you start using your camera so that's all the gear that that is all of it you don't need any more gear than that all you need now is storage so you need some hard drives you need some sd cards for your camera get some sandisk 128 gigabyte sd cards don't get the, just the smaller ones because when you start to shoot bigger events or bigger things you'll run out of space what's the point just spend the extra money now have the extra storage directly into your camera buy the sandisk sd cards they're down below and then storage wise, you just need some hard drives. So obviously you can store your photos. You don't want to do a photo shoot and then just be deleting your photos. You, all want to, you always want to keep your, your footage, your videos, your photos stocked up on some nice hard drives that you can just put under your desk because you never know when you're going to need that footage again. Don't just delete your stuff. I always keep all my RAWs and all my edited photos on these hard drives. I use the SanDisk SSD. So this doesn't have any moving components inside, which means it's really, really fast. They're a little bit more expensive, but I basically, the way I work is I put all my photos straight onto the hard drive after a photo shoot. I don't put anything on my laptop and then I edit off of the SSD. So that's running into my laptop and all the photos are on here and it's just passing it through my computer so my computer can stay nice and storage free so it can run at a faster pace. So get an SSD. You don't have to get this one. This one's quite expensive, but I recommend this one for editing off of. But then to actually store your stuff, go for a Lacey or a, what's the other one? A Seagate hard drive. These are bigger hard drives. They've got moving components inside, hence why they're a bit bigger. They're a bit more delicate. If I drop this, it might break because the stuff inside might break. So, but these ones are a lot more, they're a lot cheaper, but they've got a lot more storage. So this is like my bulky one that sits onto the desk. Once this fills up and I've edited like my recent projects on this SSD, I will then get this, transfer the files onto this big fat thing and then shove this under my desk, move on. And then when I need another one, I'll buy another one. This one's like, they're like 60 quid each. So, and it's five terabytes. Like you couldn't ask for a better deal. And then just make sure you've got a laptop that can actually just handle the programs that you need. So you obviously need Lightroom if you're gonna start editing photos as a photographer. Um, so just make sure you've got a laptop that can keep up with the content you're about to throw through it. But that's why, again, I have the SSD because it just puts less stress on my laptop because everything is off of this. So that is it really. That is all of the gear that you need as a beginner photographer. And remember, you need, not that you want. That's all the gear that you need as a beginner photographer to start off in the game get some jobs under your belt and just not run into any problems when on jobs and always be covered for any situation. So yeah, hopefully that helped. All the gear that I've just explained and showed you is gonna be in the description. This video was really simple, but it's all it needs to be. I feel like some videos over explain too much. Those are the things you need. It's all down below. Welcome to photography. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We've just got started. I'm gonna keep posting these videos Monday, Wednesday and Friday, car slash photography content. So if you like any of that sort of stuff, make sure you just subscribe, I can't even speak. And I'll see you later.